Yes. Got a package from Mr. Brooks. Okay. Well, listen, you tell that agent if his client's not in training camp tomorrow, he's history. I will not renegotiate and I'll force him to sit out his contract. You got it? Good. Excuse me, sir. Who the hell? I got a special delivery package for you. How'd you get in here? What are you? I'm sorry, boss. Sorry to bother you at such an hour, sir. I'm Detective Mingus. This is Sergeant Clark. May we come in? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Richard? Who is it? Are you Mrs. Arthur Brooks? Yes. Your husband's maid said you might be here. I'm afraid I have some bad news, ma'am. What's going on? Your husband, Mr. Brooks, was murdered about two hours ago. What? <sighs> Happened at the mansion. Looks like an armed robbery. Whoever did it knew exactly where to go and what to do. Oh, my God. Under the circumstances, sir, would you mind telling me your relationship to Mrs. Brooks? I'm her attorney. That's convenient. Excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, nothing. It's very late. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply anything. Why don't you give me a call in the morning? We'll set up a time to talk. Sure. Our condolences, ma'am. Thank you. I had the privilege of knowing Arthur Brooks, the man, not just Art Brooks, the myth. Oh, sure, he was brilliant at playing the controversial, always quotable sports owner. And yes, he worked hard to cultivate his image as a modern day buccaneer never afraid to pull his sword and fight. But there was another side to this fiercely competitive man, a more private, more complex and gentler side. This Arthur Brooks was the loyalist of friends, a devoted father and a loving husband. The facts don't lie, folks. Right here are all the numbers for three straight years. The as I was saying, for three straight years, the T-Bird's marketing budget has increased 22, 26, 36 percent. And what have we gotten in return? Well, let's see. Attendance, oh, it's gone down every year. And the uh, forecast for next season is even worse. Now, what does this tell me? That either you people are overpriced, or you simply don't know what the hell you're doing. With all the money I have invested here, I could have built out a dozen luxury boxes and tripled my return. And who are you? I don't remember seeing you before. 
I'm Kelly Moore, sir, uh, with Rinstead and Associates. Oh, yes, my newest and highest priced consultant. So tell me, what do you think the problem is here? I think you're a little too quick to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Is that right? I think so. Well, then I suggest, young lady, you show me the errors of my way. All right. If you track the three-year performances of your in-stadium promotions, such as Bad Appreciation Night and your vacation giveaways, you're going to see that this is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. And why is that? Well, with all your advertising trade-offs, these stunts are very inexpensive. And they've increased attendance by an average of about 12%. So you could easily double the number of your promotions and then maybe cut back in less productive areas. What did you say your name was again? Kelly Moore. To see Mr. Brooks. Yes, of course. Please come in. I'll tell Mr. Brooks you're here. Thank you. Miss Moore. Hi. Hey, good. Yeah, you're not put off by me asking you to work on a Saturday. No, not at all. Good, good. I thought we might have a light lunch before we got down to business. That sounds great. Hmm. Your house is absolutely beautiful. Thank you. You know, it, it's amazing how much you can acquire if you start cheating and exploiting people at an early enough age. I was about this. <laughs> Somehow I think you earned all this fair and square. Well, are you careful now? I'm a sucker for flattery. <laughs> Here, this way. Go back into this tile over here. There's a story, too. Thank you. So how long have you worked at Rinstad and Associates? Oh, about six months. Huh. You enjoy it there? So far, so good. Thank you, Philippe. Lisa will have coffee in the study later. Yes, sir. You certainly lead a very charmed life. You think so? Yes, sir, I do. No, please, no more, sirs. Call me Art. Yes, sir. Hmm? Just kidding. Hmm. <laughs> well, here's to the start of a most profitable relationship. Cheers. I've always loved horses. Everything about them. Me too. I started riding when I was in grade school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go riding someday. Okay. Anyway, about 10 years ago, I went over to Ireland to try to buy this famous stud farm. The negotiations weren't going very well, when all of a sudden, I spotted this foal racing with his mother. There's something magical about it. And I asked the owner, and he said, well, indeed, he was so special. It was the only horse he ever bred that he would never sell. So I, I watched him again. I turned to the owner and I offered him his full asking price, plus $200,000, but only if he included that fold. What did he say? Are you daft? <laughs> so what happened? Ever heard of a horse named Sligo Dancer? I think so. Triple Crown winner, Breeders' Cup, undefeated, 19 consecutive races. Miss Moore? I would like to introduce you to Sligo Dancer, in my opinion, the greatest racehorse of all time. Oh, he's beautiful. And do you know who he is? That little foal in Ireland? <laughs> exactly. But you see, there's a moral to this whole story. And what might that be? When I first laid eyes on that foal, I knew how extraordinary he was. And no matter what it took, no matter what it cost, I knew that I had to have it. Now that, that feeling, that certainty has only happened to me one other time in my life. When was that? Today.
this very moment. I don't understand. Do you know why I'm so successful, Kelly? No, I've always been a gambler. I've never been afraid to roll the dice. How about you? Are you willing to go for broke? What are you talking about? I'm talking about calling ahead of the airport, getting on my private plane, going to Las Vegas, and getting married. You're kidding, right? I do. Big smile now. Mrs. Brooks, would you like to have your breakfast in bed? Oh, no, I'll be down about 10 minutes. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. Call with New York. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm. Whew. You are so beautiful. Stay home with me today. You know what they say about all work and no play. <laughs> Don't tempt me, Kelly, please. Why? No, no, no. no. I, I, I wish I could, believe me, but. But what? But, well, for starters, I've got to be in Denver mm. at 3 o'clock. Hey, you're going to have to bear with me, babe. This is a very busy time. Hmm? Okay. That's my girl. Look, I've got some papers I need you to sign. Papers? Yeah, ever since we eloped, my lawyers have been driving me crazy. About what? Well, we never got a prenuptial agreement, and for someone in my situation, that's just unheard of. So have a quick read, sign on the X's, and we'll live happily ever after. expect you to sign this. Well, I don't know anything about contracts, so I thought I should at least talk to a lawyer. I'm glad you did, because this... What? Frankly, it's an insult. He told me this was routine. Believe me, this is not routine. <sighs> what should I do? Be honest. Tell him you had an attorney, review the documents, and that they're simply not fair. I can't tell him that. Why not? Because. He's not the kind of man that you talk to that way. Mrs. Brooks, your husband is a very sophisticated businessman. My guess? He'd be very surprised if you didn't see an attorney, and even more surprised if you didn't ask for major changes. I hope you're right. Kelly? Does the dress meet with your approval, my lord? What is this, some kind of a joke? You don't like it? Well, where do you think we're going, the MTV Awards? Everybody said I look great in this dress. Yeah, well, the hell with everybody. The only opinion that matters is mine. And I say it's totally inappropriate. Arthur. Don't give me this Arthur stuff. I'm honorary chairman of this event, and I'm not going to be upstaged by your cleavage. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Huh. It's beautiful. Wear that. Art, that dress is so old-fashioned. This one is much more contemporary. Really? Well, it's also got a very big stain on it. What? You bastard. Don't you ever talk to me that way again. 
you understand me ever? You are hurting me. Yeah, well, not half as bad as your shyster lawyer is hurting me. Every day is some new demand, and to add insult to injury, I'm stuck paying his bills. So that's what this is all about? Well, I have some rights, too. Rights? Right? What about my rights? We have a one-night stand. You think you deserve half of everything I own? I can't believe you just said that to me. I really can't. Look, I didn't mean it the way it sounded. It just... I'm sorry, Kelly. Really? Then what did you mean? I just want all this legal crap resolved. It's a, it's a pressure I don't need right now. How do you think I feel? Well, let's just... Let's just forget it, okay? Forgive me, right? Hmm. You know I love you. Why didn't you go make yourself beautiful for me? always ask me what my dad was really like. But what few people ever knew was my father's tireless devotion to charitable causes, his dedication to raising millions of dollars to help the needy or fund medical research. That's the kind of man that my dad really was. Thank you. Take care of yourself. I'll see if I can come by tomorrow. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Kelly, if you ever need to talk, just call me anytime. I will. Thank you, Reverend. It was a you very You have some good... nerve coming here. Everybody knows what Jenna, you really are. Jenna. Everybody knows that you trapped my father. Jenna, Jenna, not here. I'm sorry, Reverend, but no. Everybody just wants to whisper of this and nobody wants to tell the truth. Jenna, the Reverend's right. Can we talk about this somewhere else? No. Why did you have to come here to mock my father? Please. Wasn't killing him enough? Jenna. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Maybe you didn't pull the trigger, but you certainly know who did. You were behind the whole thing. <laughs> I am so sorry. No one believes what she just said. I'll be fine. I appreciate you coming down here, sir. No problem. Guess you heard about that nasty incident at the cemetery with Mr. Brooks's daughter. Everyone knows Jenna Brooks is psychotic. Yeah, and I heard she's had some problems. She's been in and out of drug rehab for years, and she's always resented any woman that's ever gotten near her father. Yeah, I heard that too. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to meet with you again. My partner, Detective Beltran, this is Richard Linsky. Hi, right, hold on. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. You too. Let's go in here. It's a little tight here. This is such a high-profile case. The last thing I want to do is base my investigation on what the tabloids are saying. Yeah. Do you mind if I take this? No, go ahead. Good. Now, for starters, how did you first get involved with Mrs. Brooks? I, I handled some legal matters for her. A so-called post-nuptial right, agreement. Right, right. But when did you go from being just her lawyer to her lover? I guess, um... I would say that our relationship changed the day that she showed up at my office. Hey, 
you go. Thank you. Here, let me take that. Back. Again, I'm sorry to just barge in on, on you like this. There's no need to apologize. Just tell me what the problem is, and uh, hopefully I can help. My husband is totally out of control. He's had some business problems over the past few weeks, and... And what? And he is so competitive about everything. I mean, he hates to lose. And if everything doesn't go his way, he gets so angry. And when he gets angry, he gets very violent. Oh, boy. I shouldn't have come from no, Mrs. Brooks, this is very serious, right? It's important that you talk to somebody, all right? Please. I'm just really afraid that he's going to kill me someday. I mean, I, I have bruises all over my body. Did this just start, or it's been happening for a while? It's been happening for over a month now, ever since he started drinking heavily again. I'm not trying to smother you, Art. I'm just trying to help. What the hell are you talking about? You! Us! Our situation! All this drinking and all this... All this, all this... What? Who are you, my mother? No, I'm not your mother, but I am your wife, and I deserve better than this. Oh, yeah? Well, so do I! <laughs> You come back here! Hey! Hey! Where do you think you're going? Art, let go of me. You're really scaring me. Oh, yeah? Well, that's good. You should be scared because, you know what? You seem to have forgotten the rules around here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right. Okay, I'm good. sorry. Right. Okay, I'm tired. Okay. I'm sorry. Just let me go to bed. Okay. Let me go to bed. Art. Come on. Oh. Stop it. Art, get off me. <laughs> you better run, Kelly. You better run. You understand me? Good. I was so scared. I had to lock myself in a guest bedroom that night. And I don't know what to do. I guess that's why I'm here. You believe the marriage is over? Oh, I... I... Yeah. It's been over for a long time. And I just, I can't live like this anymore. The first thing we have to do is we have to get a complete medical examination with photos to document the physical abuse. I can't do that. Mrs. Brooks, you gotta trust me on this one. This is something you have to do. If I go to my doctor, my husband's gonna find out. No. I have a doctor. She's an old friend, and she'll protect your confidentiality. It's just crucial that we do it right away while the bruises are still visible. Let me, let me call her, okay? I then took her to the doctors and waited until she was done. Emotionally, this is the first time in my professional career I've ever crossed the line with a client. Well, she's a mighty attractive woman. So, did she decide to file for a divorce? No, not then. Uh, but then one night, uh, it's been one o'clock in the morning, she came out to my house, really hysterical. He went crazy on me, I mean, completely crazy. He, he pulled out this gun and he put it to my head and I thought I was dead. I mean, it was horrible. I, I can't take this anymore. It's okay. it's okay. I really, I can't, I can't. It's all right, it's all right. It's okay. I can't go back okay. there, Richard. No, 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 no. No, you can't. No. And how did Mr. Brooks take to all this? And according to Kelly, he was pretty unhappy.
Where are you going? The girlfriends. What girlfriend? You know, Kelly, you walk out on me now. Fat lady has sung. It's all over. I think she's been singing for quite a while now, Art. You know what's going to happen if you leave within one week? I guarantee it. I'm going to pick up a newspaper and read an item, some gossip column about how Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Brooks have split up. Well, I can't help that. You know how it's going to make me feel like an idiot? Because all of my enemies are going to be laughing at me. Art, just stop it. So, Kelly, if you do walk out of me, I want you to understand something. You're never coming back. Because I'm never going to let you back. You walk out, poof, you're gone. From my head, and from my heart. On the other hand, if you want to give it another shot, you know, try to set things straight. It's your call. Later that day, she moved into my apartment. How we doing? Okay. You did the right thing, you know. I know. Yeah. It's just tough. Yeah. yeah. Something like this is just usually tough. At least one good thing came out of all this, though. What's that? You. Us. I really couldn't have made it these past few months without your kindness. Your understanding. Wow, not too shabby. You know, even if you won the lottery, you could never afford to live in a place like this. Yeah, why is that? Because the utility bills would cost a fortune. Well, you got to hand it to him. The man lived well, too well. Yeah, you can say that again. And then everything ended for him one hot summer night. <laughs> you are a poet, you know that? A real poet. No, I'm just a sensitive guy in a cruel world. <laughs> and here's what we got, an abusive husband, his beautiful young trophy wife, her secret lover, and a zillion dollar estate. So you think Prince Charming and Cinderella are behind it? What do you think? Well, unlike you, Mingus, I tend to keep an open mind. Don't touch the hair. How many times I gotta tell you not to touch my hair? <laughs> Come on, I can't wait to see the inside of this joint. I believe you said you worked for Mr. Brooks for about five years? Yes. Was he a good boss? Was he a nice man? No, he was terrible. And why'd you keep working for him? He paid me very well. Yeah, well, I can relate to that. Yeah, except I don't pay you that well. You can say that again. Please, don't sit on the furniture. Sorry. Where he comes from, they usually sit on the furniture. That's right. How about Mrs. Brooks? You like her? I love Mrs. Brooks. So pretty, so thoughtful. But he was so mean to her. Can you give us an example? Sometimes I had to close my ears to get to sleep. He was always screaming at her, throwing things. Well, we appreciate your honesty, ma'am. We really do. But because you liked Mrs. Brooks so much, you wouldn't withhold any information to protect her, would you? No, sir. Good. 
Now, besides all the shouting and throwing things, did you ever actually hear Mr. Brooks threaten to kill Mrs. Brooks? Not Mrs. Brooks. So you heard him threaten to kill somebody else? Mr. Linsky? Yeah. This is Art Brooks. I think you know who I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen up, buddy, and listen good. This insulting little affair with my wife is over. Finish. Kaput. You understand what I'm saying? Are you uh, threatening me, Mr. Brooks? No, this is no threat, Counselor. This is a fact. Either you stop seeing her immediately or you're a dead man. You got it? A dead man. happen to be in the neighborhood. That jumping is pretty dangerous, isn't it? Not if you know what you're doing. It's a beautiful animal. Yeah. My husband always liked horses a lot more than he liked people. You didn't like Mr. Brooks very much, did you? That's not true. He was a very different person when we got married. What changed? I didn't know it, but Art was a recovering alcoholic. And when he started drinking again, everything changed. I never hated my husband, Detective. I only hated what he became when he drank. I'm sure you're aware that your husband threatened to kill Richard Linsky. He didn't stop seeing you. Art threatened and tried to intimidate everybody. That's just who he was. So you're saying that neither you nor Mr. Linsky took these threats seriously? No, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. I believe that Arthur was perfectly capable of killing Richard, or me, or anyone, for that matter, who got in his way. Listen, I lived with that fear every single day of my life. That's why I had to move out. But by moving in with Mr. Linsky, didn't you up the stakes? What do you mean? I mean, he was a very jealous and volatile guy. Wasn't that like throwing fuel in the fire? Why did you come here, Detective? To be honest, ma'am, ever since I talked to Mr. Linsky, I've been thinking. Thinking what? Maybe Mr. Linsky felt his life, your life, was in danger. And maybe he decided, without your knowledge, of course, Eliminate your husband before That is could... ridiculous. Richard is the kindest, gentlest man I have ever known. He and Art were polar opposites, and that's why Art hated him so much. But Mr. Linsky knew about the threat. I don't care. Richard could never hurt anybody. You know what? This is really getting annoying, Detective. Because right now, you're just grasping for straws. Simply trying to do my job, ma'am. Well, with all due respect, you're not doing it very well. Mrs. Brooks. I apologize, ma'am, if I offended you in any way. It's OK. Let's just forget about it. Yeah. Detective? Do you enjoy your work? Why do you ask? Just curious. That's good, because I'm curious, too. If you'll spare me just 10 more minutes of your time, I won't have to bother you again. Is that a promise? This counts on it. Okay. Then 
why don't we go up to the house for something to drink? Sounds good to me. <laughs> What about this? Stolen, abandoned the next morning, no prints. What did he steal? Ten grand worth of jewelry and watches? Yeah, and he left behind a fortune in art. Hmm. So we know it was a professional hit, probably with some help from the inside. What about the maid? I don't think so. So you think it was the wife and her boyfriend? That's the obvious. Two lovebirds figure they'd kill rather than be killed and then pocket a hundred million for their troubles. There's another scenario. Arthur Brooks was a big-time gambler with huge swings in his bank accounts. One month, he'd have 10 million. The next, 10 bucks. You know, I talked to a banker. He told me guys like Brooks are always floating a ton of debt. And he'd get into big problems if one of his lenders says, pay up. You think Brooks was involved with the mob? Well, I remember checking into it. He spent a lot of time in Vegas. You cross-reference all these phone records? A year's worth of Brooks, the wife, in Linsky's. I got a jury coming back. What about the cellular records? You check them? No, not yet. Oh, come on, guys. What the hell are you waiting for? The press is hounding us like crazy on this. Yeah? Well, tell the press we've had some cutbacks and we're dancing as fast as we can. It's the 21st century. People use cells, email, the internet. Check it out. Yes, ma'am. Check this out. You know, Earl, I think she's got a crush on you. You think so? Oh, definitely. It's all in the eyes. <laughs> Did you see today's paper? According to courthouse sources, Brooks' widow has hired famed defense attorney Abel Gans, fueling speculation Mrs. Brooks and her lover, Richard Linsky, may soon be indicted for the murder of the controversial sports tycoon. And who could have leaked something like this? <sighs> no, I know. You're right. None of this matters. I gotta go. Excuse me, Miss Kelly. Yes, Lisa. Shall I set up for lunch in here? Oh, no, I think down by the pond. It's much too pretty a day to be inside. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yes, sir? Abel Gans. I'm here to see Mrs. Brooks. I guarantee they'll have my drive up on the evening news. This is insane. I can't even go shopping without a TV crew following me around. You're right. This whole thing is completely out of control. I mean, we need to prepare for the worst. That is why Abel's here. But why are they looking at us instead of out there trying to find the real killer? It's because you're a sexier target in every sense of the word. But the media circus can work both ways. I can go on CNN and lecture the press about rushing to judgment. Everyone remembers that poor security guard in Atlanta. And you can certainly raise some doubts about Art's character. Absolutely. Is that really necessary? Yes, it is. Richard is right. This case is already flavor of the day on trash TV and the tabloids. You just can't sit back and hope that somehow reason will prevail. I hate to say it, but the Queen of Mean was right. The sale records. Guess who Richard Linsky called last month? O.J. Simpson? Better. One Vincent Coupe de Ville. You're joking. No. And on the night of the murder, Vincent Coupe de Ville used his cell phone to call Richard Linsky. Way to go, Holmes. Way to go. Here he is. I think he'd be driving a caddy. Not Coop. He's always had a lot of style.
Yeah, well, that kind of style takes a lot of money. Man's resourceful. When the killing business is slow, do a little kidnapping, extortion. Coop's always been an all-service gangster. Yeah, well, let's go bust his gangster ass. Yeah. Mr. DeVille, there's a policeman on the way up to see you. Thank you, baby. Hey, Coop. Long time no see. Earl of Pearl. What brings you knock, knock, knocking on my front door? Got a search warrant, Coop. So why don't you invite me in? What's with the eggs? I'm just making an omelet. Wait, 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 wait. What's this all about? I've been investigating a big time murder. Big time. Someone killed this sports guy, Arthur Brooks. Maybe you read about it in the papers. I don't read the papers. Too much negativity, right? Exactly. Hey, look, man, if you come here accusing me of something, I got nothing to say to you till I talk to my lawyer. That's my partner. Door's open. Mingus! In here. Hey, man. You going on a trip? You are not gonna believe this. I'm walking down the alley, and this comes flying out of that window. Gee, I wonder how that could have happened. <laughs> nice and light, Coop. Nice and light. I use it to shoot rabbits. Yeah, right. Yeah, I guess this is a new white coffee they're brewing in Columbia, huh? You know, Coop, possession of a firearm and narcotics with intent to sell is a serious violation of your parole. I didn't know what was in there till I got it home. I was just doing a favor for a friend. Let me tell you something, Coop. We believe you. Don't we, Eddie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But some of these judges nowadays, they may not buy into this little... Yeah, they got no heart, Coop. No human compassion. And under the three-strike rule, I do believe you're gonna do hard time. Oh, very hard. For the rest of your natural life. It's Monty Hall time, Coop. What do you say? Hi, huh, Coop. Let's make a deal. Okay, man. First, you gotta show me what's behind door number one. <laughs> Is that exactly what he said? Good. Those were my instincts, too. I just hope he can yodel. No, don't you remember? We're going to the Alps for Oktoberfest. That's right. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Miss Kelly, Miss Kelly. What's the matter, Lisa? The police are here. They want to talk to you. The police? Yes. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, ma'am. What is it? I have to place you under arrest for conspiracy to commit murder. What? Oh, you gotta be kidding. What are you doing? Sorry, you can't do that. I have to call Richard. You can't, he's not home. Where is he? My partner picked him up 10 minutes ago. Well, what are you doing? Get your hands off of me. You have the right to remain silent. If you give uh, up that I right, anything you say can I want to talk to Richard right now. Let's do in a court of law. 
Why are you doing this to me, Detective? You're making a terrible mistake, Detective. A terrible mistake. I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. Beyond the night. I know. But not to worry. We'll sort it all out. What about Richard? Is he all right? I just spoke with him 20 minutes ago. He sends you his love. When can I see him? Probably not till we go to trial. What? What do you mean? I have to stay here until then? What about bail? We'll try. But I'm not optimistic. Kelly, this is murder one with special circumstances. This is really insane. Unfortunately, the police have a confession from a professional killer who claims that you and Richard hired him to murder your husband. That's not what happened. In addition, there's some very incriminating phone records and bank transfers. So what are you saying? You think we're guilty? No, but I need some explanations. Otherwise, I can't begin to defend you. A couple of weeks after I moved out, I went to go see Art, hoping maybe we could end things on a more positive note. No, thank you. You know, I've been divorced before, and it's always been unpleasant. But this time, for some reason, I'm taking it very personal. Arthur. No, hear me out, because this time I really feel betrayed. I mean, it was bad enough you seeing this divorce lawyer behind my back, then I find out that you're bopping the guy. I mean, talk about rubbing salt into my wounds. I never wanted to hurt you, Art. Well, you did. And when somebody kicks me, I kick him back. Only harder. You know what? This is not why I came here. Do you honestly think? that I'm gonna allow you to just walk away with a ton of my money? Ha! I don't know what to think. I guess maybe I thought we could work things out like friends. <laughs> friends? Don't you understand we are now enemies? I'm gonna use every tool, legal or otherwise, to see you destroy. Let go of me! Hey, 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 hey. One last kiss for old time's sake, huh? Get off me! If you really care about that new boyfriend of yours, I suggest you hire a food taster. <laughs> Or someone to start his car every morning! <laughs> Art kept his promise. He started a campaign of harassment that got more threatening by the day. I'd be driving along and all of a sudden he'd pull up next to me. Or he'd send me flowers with a really twisted note. Yeah, well, that's when he's the worst. We can't do this anymore, Richard. We need to get some protection. Okay, okay. 
let's just think this thing through here, okay? I don't know, even with this tape, I don't think the police are gonna- no, We can't go to the police. This is gonna wind up in the newspapers. I mean, we're gonna be a laughing stock. Your career, your- Okay, what are you suggesting? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we have to hire a bodyguard or a detective or something, <laughs> okay, but- okay, okay, all right, look. I know a PI. He's, a, he's an ex-federal agent. His name's Gene Walsh. He's very, very well connected. He's also very discreet. See what he thinks. He's a contract killer out of Vegas. There's nothing this guy wouldn't do if the money was right. So Art's planning to have Richard killed? No, no, come on. He's just probably trying to scare me away, right? I wouldn't take that. Why man. not? Because nobody hires Vinnie DeVille to scare. They hire him to kill. Oh, my God. Now we have to go to the police, Richard. I'm not sure that'll solve your problem. What do you mean? Well, the cops will take notes. They'll send a car by every eight hours. Meanwhile, Vinnie can sell the contract to somebody else, and Richard's life is still in danger. So what are we going to do? So what did Walsh suggest? He wanted to set up a meeting with Art, confront him with the information, make him call off DeVille, just settle everything once and for all. Is that what happened? No. The meeting with Art never took place. Walsh said he'd had it all arranged, and then it was canceled. Nobody ever told me why. Okay, I'm gonna count to ten, and if you're still standing here, I'm gonna start screaming. No, why would you want to do that? Because I know who you are. Well, then you know I would never hurt you. At least not out here in the open like this. What do you want? I want to talk. About what? What a business proposition. I'm not interested. You know. I know all about that gumshoe Walsh plan to talk to your husband. Let me tell you something, I don't trust either one. I survived by my instincts. And my gut tells me when somebody's trying to set me up. Set you up? Yeah, and that's why I want to talk to you. I gotta propose something that I think's gonna solve everybody's problems. Richard, talk to me, please. I don't know what to say. I, I, I can't believe you would even consider this. On second thought, hey, why not? We'll hire this professional killer, pay him an extra $10,000. He'll kill Art instead of me, and everything will be back to normal. This huh? isn't funny. No, it's not, Kelly. But this is so out of control, and someone will end up dead unless we put a stop to it. I agree. I totally agree. But DeVille says that this is our only option. Option? <laughs> Kelly, are you hearing what you're saying? Killing someone is not an option. Art is a monster. And he's going to kill you. And then he's going to kill me. That's what DeVille said. And there's only one way to stop him. I love you, Richard. But if anything ever happened to you, I don't think I could go on. I mean, he's right. We have no choice. Whether you did it for love or money, or just for the hell of it, it is of no importance to me. Abel? No. Hear me out. As a defense attorney, I would guess that about 98% of my clients are guilty. And I don't have a problem with that because my job is not the quest for truth. It's to provide my client with the best possible defense. But once a client tells me he's guilty, I can't provide him with the best possible defense because the illusion of innocence that I need to maintain has been shattered. What are you talking about? I am innocent. Didn't you just tell Abel, me? Well, you never let me finish. Then tell me. Did 
Did you go ahead and pay Vincent DeVille to kill your husband? No. No, I did not. The next day we came to our senses and decided to call the whole thing off. Looking back on it, I really feel I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. As Richard said, it was madness. Absolute madness that I even proposed it. And that afternoon, Richard met with DeVille to tell him what we decided. How did DeVille take the news? Not well. DeVille went wild. He said we were double-crossing him. He demanded to be paid in full. And that's when he started blackmailing us. That explains the phone calls and the money transfers. Yes. I mean, this whole thing just... Richard finally told him that we were going to the police. And then the next morning, Detective Mingus came over and told us that Art was murdered. You have to believe me. I'm telling you the truth. We had nothing to do with the killing. It was all DeVille. I guess I made a mess of things. That you did. But I've seen worse. Now at least I have something to work with. Thank you. How dare you walk away from me? Hey, nobody talks to me like that. Nobody. And no cop has the authority to make a deal like this. In case you forgot, Counselor, I called you about this. Yes, and I said I'd consider immunity. But little did I figure that you'd turn around and give away the store. Do you know what the press is going to do to us on this? To hell with the press. I made this deal because it was the only way to make Coop talk. And because I got Coop to talk, the case is solved, and you're going to get two high-profile convictions. You really don't get it, do you? All the public is going to hear is that we gave full immunity to an admitted killer. And no matter what happens at the trial, he goes scot-free. Excuse me, but I don't think you get it. Vanny DeVille may be scum, but he isn't stupid. If he doesn't get immunity, he'll show up in court and claim he made the whole thing up. A smart defense lawyer like Abel Gans will explain away all the circumstantial evidence, and bam, they're all not guilty. I just hope that you have started planning for your retirement, Detective, because this time, You've gone too far. Oh, yeah? Let's see who has the last laugh, Counselor. Let's just wait and see. From the incriminating phone records to the cash transfers and the confession of their hired killer, we will show you a meticulously planned mosaic of murder. And ladies and gentlemen, please, do not be fooled by appearances. Don't keep asking yourselves, why? Why would such an attractive, well-educated couple plan such a savage crime? The answer is really quite simple. Sex and money. Lots of money. And for the defendants, Richard Linsky and Kelly Moore Brooks, that's what it all came down to. Jealousy and greed. Two of the oldest, most intoxicating, and deadliest of all criminal motives. There is one thing the prosecution said that I do agree with. This is really a very simple case. The entire government case is based on the word the credibility of a despicable lowlife named Vincent DeVille. Can you believe the prosecution gave an admitted killer total and absolute immunity? A free pass to go out and murder someone else. But there is a price for Mr. DeVille's cooperation. He must appear in this courtroom and lie making up a story that never happened, hoping to convince you, like his good friends in the district attorney's office, that what he is saying 
could be true. But none of it is true, ladies and gentlemen. And please, remember something about Vincent DeVille when he takes the witness stand. His very name, DeVille, is derived from the word devil. And that is exactly what the prosecution has done. They've made a wicked, immoral, and self-serving deal with Lucifer himself. I do. Did you or the police first raise the issue of immunity? Me. I said no immunity, no information. And what if they had said no? I wouldn't have talked. You mean you wouldn't have implicated the defendants? Right. Is it against your nature to ever help anyone in law enforcement? Yeah. Mr. DeVille, are you aware that my office was very unhappy with the scope of immunity promised to you by the arresting officer? Yes. And do you also know that if you suddenly retracted everything in your confession because of that blanket immunity, there's not a thing that we could do to prosecute you for the killing of Arthur Brooks? Right. So why are you helping your enemies in law enforcement? Well, I'm not here to help anyone. I'm here because I made a deal to tell the truth. And what is the truth, Mr. DeVille? Those two were behind this whole thing from the get-go. It was a total crock that Arthur Brooks hired me to kill them. They're the ones who hired me to kill him. You're a liar! Why are you doing this? Mr. Gantz, control your client. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Brooks, one more outburst like that and you'll be held in contempt, understand? Do you understand? Yes, sir. I first met uh, Mr. Brooks through a mutual friend we had in a racing business. Brooks said he had a problem he was hoping I could fix. Sligo Dancer. Yeah, that's a hell of a horse. This is a thrill, Mr. Brooks. You know, I won five grand on him in the Derby. Hmm. A big day for me. Beautiful horse. You know, I've had a lot of women in my life, but I've never felt the way I do about Kelly. There's just something. She's so... How can I help? Well, I think she's been cheating on me with this yuppie divorce lawyer she's been talking to behind my back. You planning to get a divorce? No, I wasn't. If it comes to that, I need you to get the facts, but very discreetly. This great's my specialty. Good. It has to be documented. Because adultery triggers a clause in our post-nup agreement which cuts her payout by 75%. I'll get on it right away. You know, nothing would make me happier than if you came back to me and said that I was just imagining all this. And this was all in my head. No, I see what you mean. She is one beautiful woman. And did you, in fact, uncover evidence that Mrs. Brooks was having an adulterous affair with Richard Linsky? Yes, I did. And how did Mr. Brooks react to this news? <laughs> Not well. <laughs> that son of a bitch. How did you get these? I'm sorry, boss, but you said you wanted the truth. Yeah, I can't believe they'd act like this in public when they could be seen by people who know me. I got some video, too. Yeah, I don't want to see it. You just hold on to it. It's just... It's so insulting. Listen. Can you, uh... throw a scare into this guy? Sure, just tell me how big. Yeah, well, nothing physical. I just want you to start playing with his head really make his life miserable. Gotcha. Playing with people's heads is another one of my specialties.
So I started doing my thing against Mr. Lenski. It's like April Fool's stuff, you know, leaving weird messages, following his car. Then one day I'm out walking my dogs and all of a sudden he's right there beside me. He says, uh, we need to talk. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase, pal. Art Brooks is never gonna let Kelly go under any circumstances. Uh, it's none of my business. No, but I've been checking on you and I know what your business is. Is that right? That's right. And I've got a serious business proposition for you. I'm all ears. Before Art Brooks has you kill me, you kill him. 25,000 up front, 25,000 when it's done. Are you interested? You make it 75 with half up front, I'm very interested. That's what I was hoping you'd say. And that, Mr. DeVille, is when the conspiracy to kill Mr. Brooks was agreed to. Yeah. After that, it was just working out the logistics. Everything the man said was a lie. We never had a meeting like that. It's preposterous. He's just making it up. He's the one who came to us. It's like the Twilight Zone. Something very strange is going on here. Richard's right. It's a conspiracy. I mean, why else would he be lying? He's lying to save his skin. That's the deal he made. And the DA has obviously coached him. I can't believe how nonchalant you are about all this. That's because we haven't got up to bat yet. Remember, Gene Walsh, a very respected private investigator, is going to blow a hole through everything DeVille said. And once his credibility is destroyed, their whole case is over. Mr. Gann, towards back. Okay. Now listen to me. No matter what outrageous lies you hear, keep you cool, all right? No more outbursts, Kelly. Block is a hanging judge, so don't give me any more rope. In your earlier testimony, Mr. DeVille, you said you liked Mr. Brooks. You even felt sorry for him. That's right. Then why did you brutally murder him in cold blood? Because that's what they hired me to do. And as a consummate professional, you always try to carry out the wishes of the people who hire you. Right? Right. So, if somebody said, I will give you total immunity against prosecution. If you will lie on the witness stand, you'd certainly be prepared to do that, right? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. With all due respect, Your Honor. Mr. Gantz, if you'd like, you may rephrase your question. Mr. DeVille, is there any crime that you wouldn't commit or help carry out if you were sufficiently compensated? I don't know. For example, if somebody offered you $100,000 to kill a member of this jury, you wouldn't have a problem with Objection. that. Objection. This line of questioning is absurd. I agree. Strike the question from the record. Your Honor, the prosecution's entire case is built around the word of this admitted killer. That is not true. So I should be allowed to show the jury who this man really is in his own words. Your Honor, Mr. DeVille is not on trial here. But his word is. Fine. But like any witness, he deserves a certain degree of respect, not browbeaten and bad. Your Honor, this is all about PR. They're just embarrassed. They're in bed with this animal. Your Honor. That's enough, both of you. Now, I'm going to give you a little leeway here, Mr. Gans, but I am warning you, any more name-calling or attempts to inflame this jury, and I will shut you down so hard and so fast. I understand, Your Honor. Well, you'd better. Now, unless there are any objections, let's break for lunch. Hey, I think Abel's scoring some points. I love you. It'll be just fine. Could I speak to my attorney just for one minute? matter you look like you've just seen a ghost you know your theory that there's some kind of huge conspiracy going on here well i am beginning to believe you're right 
What are you talking about? What, what happened? Gene Walsh, our star witness. The one person who knows that DeVille started this whole thing. What about him? He disappeared. He disappeared? Left a cryptic message with his secretary that he had to go to Europe and he hasn't been heard from since. What does this mean? What if he doesn't come back? I have to be honest. It's a killer. An absolute killer. People, there's got to be something we can do. Other than you and Richard taking the stand. I thought you said that that was too risky. But under the circumstances, we don't have any other options. Oh, my God. You'll be all right. So you're saying that conversation never happened? It didn't happen that way. And the conversation in the park that he described in such detail never took place. So just about everything that Mr. DeVille said on this witness stand was a lie? That's correct. Please, sir. In your own words, tell us what really happened. The day after we first met, we met again. Now, I don't understand what kind of game you're playing here. It's not a game. We just can't go through with something like this. Yeah, why is that? We slept on it and decided that it's just not who we are or who we want to become. <laughs> Save the sermon for Sunday school, will you, pal? Listen, this is a major problem for me. We're willing to compensate you for any of your troubles. Right? No kidding. Yeah. I double-crossed my client. Now you double-cross me. What do you think that's worth? Whatever you think is fair. We just want out of it. Out of it? Yeah. yeah. Who do you think you're dealing with? That's some turnip that just fell off the truck! No, no. Remember that weasel Gene Walsh is behind all this, huh? No, he doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, right. And I bet you're not gonna go to the cops and leave this to the press and sell me down the river either, are you? No. I ought to whack you right now. Right now! And have it blamed on your pal Arthur Brooks. That way I kill two birds with one stone. But then I don't make any money, do I? And somebody's got to pay for all this aggravation. Somebody's got to pay. So, fearing for your life, you agreed to pay Mr. DeVille's blackmail demands. Yes. And that explains the withdrawals from your accounts and the matching deposits into Mr. DeVille's accounts. That's right. And when was the last time you actually spoke with Mr. DeVille? The night of the murder. No more excuses, man. I want that other 10 grand tonight. There's no way I can get that kind of money now. They'll get it for me in jewelry, gold. But you stop jerking me around. I want it tonight. We didn't know what to do. He sounded so crazy on the phone. and Kelly was falling apart. She said we had to go to the police. Instead, the next morning, the police came to us. To inform you that Arthur Brooks had been murdered? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Linsky. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. Ms. Spina? If I could have a minute, Your Honor. So far, so good. Before they continue on, I need to talk to Richard in private. Why? It's very important, please. Your Honor, may I approach the bench? You may. Ms. Spina. Ever since I heard that our star witness had disappeared, I am. Um, I've really given this a lot of thought, and I don't want you to think that I'm acting out of despair or desperation or. Do what? What are you talking about? When I take the stand, 
I'm gonna say that I hired DeVille to kill Art without your knowledge. You're gonna do what? More than ever, I believe that there is a conspiracy against us, okay? And our only hope is for you to be acquitted and then work for my release. See, this is madness. No, this no, is not... listen to me. The jury is mostly women. When they hear my stories about Art's violent behavior, they are never gonna agree to the death penalty. I'm gonna use domestic abuse as my defense. Does Abel know about this? No, is that and he why can't you're... know about this either, okay? I have to do this, or else we're both going down. I can feel it. You know I'll never let you do this. No, okay? this is not an act of pure unselfishness, okay? Unless Gene Walsh suddenly reappears, this is our last hope of ever being reunited. I can survive prison. I can survive anything as long as I know that you are out there fighting for me. I, I don't know what to say. Don't this... say anything, okay? Just say that you love me. That's all that matters to me. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Time's up. Richard. Nothing. No, that, that is not true. If it isn't true, Mr. Linsky, when the police arrived to tell you about the murder of Arthur Brooks, why didn't you tell them about Mr. DeVille? Such a shock. We weren't thinking straight. And a day, a week, a month later, you still weren't thinking straight? We were scared. There was this whole media onslaught, and we just never had time to think it through. But you were convinced that Vincent DeVille had committed the murder? Yes. Did you call him? Did you ask him point blank if he had indeed killed Mr. Brooks? No. Because if Mr. DeVille was eventually caught, you didn't want any phone records connecting you. Isn't that the real reason? And the phone records that do connect you are panic calls, judgment errors. Isn't that true? Yes. And earlier, when you said you were scared, weren't you scared that what has happened would happen? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. What... Weren't you scared that you would be arrested and put on trial for the murder of Arthur Brooks. Yes. And the reason that you were so scared is because that everything that Vincent DeVille has said in this courtroom is in fact true. Yes. Order. Order. Excuse me, Your Honor. I still believe my client is confused by that question. Clarify your question, Ms. Spina. Mr. Linsky, did you hire Vincent DeVille to kill Arthur Brooks? Yes or no? Yes. And isn't it true that Kelly Brooks was your partner and co-conspirator in this murderous plan? No. Oh, come on, Mr. Linsky. What's going on here? Now is the time to tell the truth, the whole truth. I'm telling the truth. Kelly knows nothing about any of this. DeVille convinced me that this was my only choice. Kill Arthur Brooks or be killed, and that is the way it was. No! Richard, don't do this. Don't say anything. One more word, Mrs. Brooks, and I'll hold you in contempt. Well, then go ahead and hold me in contempt, because I hold this whole circus in contempt. Remove the defendant. This is ridiculous. Richard is innocent. He's innocent. Quiet! I why any of this or is I will have this courtroom cleared. Never in my entire professional life have I been so blindsided, so humiliated. Forget I'm your attorney. What about our friendship, huh? 
Do you know what the armchair quarterbacks are saying about me on the TV talk shows right now? I look like an idiot. An absolute oh, idiot! I'm sorry, Abel. What else can I say? For starters, if it's true, why did you confess on the stand? We could have made a deal weeks I ago! I had no choice! What? Kelly was gonna say that she did it. That's what our little meeting was all about. <laughs> I just couldn't let her do it. I could not let her take the fall. And nobody thought of telling me anything about I, this? I couldn't tell you. You'd, you'd try to stop me. No kidding. I can't believe that you hung me out to dry like this, Richard. I really can't believe it. Abel! Totally innocent, you know. Everything Deville said is a lie. And we were set up like bowling pins. It's like Art got his revenge, even from the grave. So now what happens? The DA wants to make a deal. With Richard? No. With you. With me? If you'll admit to a peripheral involvement in the case, they'll drop the murder charge. Well, what does that mean? I can probably negotiate a sentence of two or three years. With good behavior, you'll be out in 10 months. No way. Why should I make a deal? Because if you let the jury decide, it is very risky. You know what? I'd rather trust the jury than the DA. Unless I'm acquitted, they're going to hang this on me for the rest of my life. And unless I'm free, I can't help Richard get a new trial. Kelly. No. Abel, I'm innocent. Innocent. That means no deal. You may read the verdict. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree with premeditation, we find the defendant, Richard Linsky, guilty as charged. On the charge of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree, with premeditation, we find the defendant, Kelly Moore Brooks, not guilty. May I remind everyone these proceedings are not over. Your Honor, may I address the court? Mr. Linsky, if this has anything to do with your confession. No, Your Honor, this is a personal request. I'm asking the court's permission to say goodbye to the only woman I've ever loved. Permission granted. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you. This court is adjourned.
You know the thing that still amazes me and Coop? What's that? It's how you were always so sure that lover boy lawyer of yours would confess and take the whole rap. Well, I guess I was so sure because I've always just had this way with men. <laughs> <laughs> private investigator is hired as a decoy to help detectives catch cheating husbands. You know I need the money. But it all goes horribly wrong. We're looking at five to ten hard time. Deception. Next on Lifetime Movie Network. A Lifetime Movie Network original production. Hello. To outwit a deadly kidnapper. I will find you. A courageous mother will take the law into her own hands. Mommy. The kidnapping. Tomorrow night at 8 on LMN.